again, it's good to see you all this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And so we're going to be in Luke chapter 24 this morning. But before we get there, have you ever wondered, what does the Easter bunny have to do with Easter? And I wish I had good news to tell you. I looked and I looked and I found different stories. But nothing that I found could, could has this direct relation to the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. And so I'm like, well... There's got to be some connection with all of our modern day Easter traditions that have something to do with the reason that we celebrate Easter. But I just kept getting more and more disappointed. And so I was wondering why in the world is Easter a holiday where we have all these traditions, but seemingly none of them have, they've got little or nothing to do with the real reason that we celebrate Easter. So I'm like, well, if not the Easter bunny, you know, in fact, uh, according to Time Magazine, one of the reasons or one of the theories that I found about the Easter Bunny was that according to Time Magazine, it dates back to a pagan tradition that there was the goddess of fertility. Her name was Esther, and that name got kind of translated and moved around to Easter. And so, but that, and the bunny is significant because we all know that rabbits reproduce uh, very rapidly. And so that was, according to Time Magazine, that is where the Easter Bunny came from. So, well, if not the Easter Bunny, maybe there's something else. And so I started looking at uh, some of the candy that we find on Easter. And so there's one type of candy that it's, a, again, it's an Easter Bunny, but inside it's hollow. I'm like, well, maybe there's a connection there with the fact that Jesus' grave is now empty. But again, I was met with more disappointment because I found out that the reason that the, the inside of the chocolate bar is empty has nothing to do with Christ's grave, but it's the fact that the candy makers thought that if they just put this huge, dense piece of chocolate that it would ruin people's teeth. And so they left the inside hollow. So again, there's more and more disappointment. And it just made me think, you know, Satan would love nothing more than to discredit the real reason that we celebrate this weekend. You know, we think back to Christmas and we sing songs about Jesus' birth. We give gifts that we can tie back to the real reason and the, the fact that God gave us the most precious gift in the history of the world. But then we get to Easter weekend and, and the Christmas story really doesn't have any power if Easter never happened. Amen. And so Satan is trying to cover up and he's trying to distract from the day and the weekend that really sealed his fate. And so but this morning we want to celebrate the true reason of Easter. I want to give you the, the real meaning of Easter, not some theories from magazines or, you know, not trying to figure out what we can find from the Internet on these different uh, these different traditions that we have. But what is the real meaning of Easter? And so I want us to turn to Luke chapter 24. We're going to read verses 1 through 12. It says, on the, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing spices that they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood about them in dazzling clothes. And so the women were terrified, and they bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? asked the men. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And then they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and when he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths, so he went away amazed at what had happened. And so unlike trying to figure out where the Easter Bunny came from and um, 
the story of Easter, it tells us something that it wants us to know. We celebrate Easter every year, but the gospel writers, they want us to know the truth about Easter. And Easter calls you to know the truth. And one of the truths that it wants us to know, and it's not just Luke. If we look back through all of the gospel writers, they all tell this story with their own details and their own personal style. But they're found in all four accounts of the Gospels that the Easter story it wants you to know the truth. And the first truth it wants you to know is that Jesus is not in the grave. The Easter story calls you to know where can you find Jesus. It wants you to know where you can find him. It says the women, they went on the first day. They couldn't wait for the Sabbath to end so that they could go to the tomb so that they could find the body of Jesus. But the story tells us that they didn't find him. Luke wants you to know that Jesus is not in the grave. And it's not just Luke, but again, all of Scripture, they testify and they speak with what the angels said. Look at what the angels said. We know they're, in this verse, it calls them men. Later on in verse 24, it tells us that these men were actually angels. And they say, why are you looking for the living among the dead? In verse 5 there, Luke chapter 24. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? All of Scripture testifies that Jesus is living. Jeremiah 10.10 10 tells us that, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. And so how can the living God be in a tomb lying next to dead men and women? How can the everlasting king's reign come to a sudden end? Well, it didn't. And Peter, in Matthew 16, 16, Peter even said of Jesus, he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so during their life, the apostles, the disciples, and all throughout Scripture people recognized that Jesus wasn't just a man, but that he was the son of the living God. And so even when their world got turned out upside down, the women, they knew this in the back of their mind, but in the midst of all this distraction and heartache, their faith began to wane. And they were looking for Jesus in the wrong place. But Easter wants you to know the truth of where you can find Jesus. And so right now, doctors and researchers are, are studying and looking frantically for a cure for a vaccine for the coronavirus. And right now, they still haven't found one. They've got things that they think might work, but to date, there's no real cure. And while there may not be a cure for that, there is a cure for mankind's worst disease ever. It's called sin, and his name is Jesus. And it's the free gift of God. But are you looking in the right place? Easter wants you to know where to look. It calls you to know the truth of where you can find Jesus. And part of that truth is that he is not in the grave. But Easter also wants you to know the truth that Jesus isn't just not in the grave, but that Jesus is life. Again, the angels say, look in verse 5, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? The truth of their statement just isn't simply that the women have come to the wrong tomb. They're not like, no, you're, you're, you're just in the wrong place. But it's, it's not that Jesus' body had gone missing or that had gotten stolen, but that he is alive. He is not dead, but Jesus is alive. And it's not just that he is simply alive again, as we know life and death, but that Jesus himself is life. He's the everlasting king. Jesus said of himself in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so it's not just that Jesus isn't in the tomb. It's not just that he's come back to life, but that he is life. Jesus is the reason that we have life. He's the reason for living. He gives hope to the dying, and he gives eternal life to the sinful. Easter calls you to know the truth that Jesus is life. 
And finally, Easter also calls you to know the truth that Jesus has risen. It's not hard to understand the angel's message here. Again, if we're still looking in verse 5, why are you looking for the living among the dead? We know what it means to be alive, and we know what it means to be dead. But the angels, they didn't want there to be any hint of confusion in what they were saying. The word living here... It means one who has become alive again. They're not saying that Jesus, they're saying that, yes, Jesus did die, but he is dead no longer. He has become alive again. Dead means to no longer have life, someone whose life has ended. They're saying Jesus, yes, he was dead, but he has become alive again. He is risen, and he will be alive again forever. And so this day exists so that you can know the truth. You don't have to wonder how the story of Jesus's life ended. It's right there in scripture at least four times from four different accounts. You don't have to resolve yourself to wondering and, and not being able to be certain of the truth of Jesus's death and his resurrection. Easter wants you to know the truth that Jesus is not dead but that he has risen and he is alive and he will be alive forever. But look at what the angels say next in verse 6. They say, he is not here, but he has risen. Then they say this very important word. They say, remember, Easter not only does it want to tell you the truth about where Jesus is, they want you, it wants to tell you the truth of where you can find Jesus, but Easter also calls you to remember, to remember the Gospels. Look at what they say here. They say, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Easter is a call to remember the Gospel, to remember the words of Jesus, to remember what he told you. It's a call to remember that Jesus died for your sins. The angels aren't saying that the crucifixion never happened. They're saying, yes, you are right. You are looking in the wrong place, but you are right. The crucifixion happened. It wasn't just a bad dream, but think back. Remember to why Jesus said it had to happen this way. Yes, he really was betrayed. He was given into the hands of sinful men, and he was crucified, and he died. But the reason he died was because it was a part of God's marvelous and perfect plan. There was a purpose in his death. And he told you all along what the purpose of that death was. He said there had to be a sacrifice to cover sins. We know that every sin requires a payment. And the penalty of sin is always death. But Jesus was the payment. He and not just for a few sins, but for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2, 2 says that he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So propitiation it just means that he is the appeasement. Jesus is the appeasement for my sins. He's the appeasement for your sins. He made right all the wrongs that we have ever done. And so the angels aren't saying that the crucifixion never happened. They're saying, yes, it did happen. And praise God that it did. Because in Jesus' death, he paid for each and every sin of every person who ever lived. So the angels are calling the women and calling us today. Easter is a call to remember the gospel. But not just remember that Jesus died, but remember that he was buried. Again, you can almost hear the angels say, yes, you're right. You're, you're coming to the right place, just he's no longer here. This is the right grave. He was here. He was behind this stone. He was put in this very grave. But that's not the end of the story. Don't you remember? Remember what he told you. Remember the gospel, that he will be raised on the third day day. Remember he told you all along that death would not have the final word. Easter is a call to remember not only the death of Jesus, 
but to remember the glorious resurrection of our Lord. Easter calls you to remember the gospel. And then Easter also calls you to choose. Look at, we're going to read verses 9 through 12 again. It says, So returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths. So he went away amazed at what he had at what had happened. And so Easter is a call for us to know the truth, to know the truth of where you can find Jesus. It's a call to remember, as the angels are saying, think back, remember what Jesus said, remember the gospel. But when we know the truth, and when we remember what the gospel is about, it calls us to a choice. There, there has to be a choice that we make. And so in these last few verses of this passage, we see two choices. Verse 11 tells us that when the women got back to the others, they're telling the, their story, they're telling what happened, they're telling what the angels told them. But when they heard it, it says they, it seemed like nonsense to them. Like, this can't be true. What you're saying cannot be true. It seemed like just a fairy tale. And so the question for us and for you today is, is the story of Jesus' death and his resurrection just a nonsensical story? Do you just hear the narrative again and, and think that it's just that, that it's just a tale? that it's nonsense, and you go on in unbelief, thinking that, yes, it sounds nice, but this story has nothing to do with me personally. It has nothing to do with my current situation. It has nothing to do with my life. Easter calls you to choose. Is the story of Jesus' death and resurrection just a fairy tale? Or will you respond like Peter and believe the words of the story? Believe it and run to the grave to see for yourself the truth that Jesus is no longer dead. That this isn't just a fairy tale, but this is the greatest news that you have ever heard. And so you have a choice. Will you believe that the gospel, that the story of Jesus is the greatest news ever? Or that it's just a fairy tale? The choice is yours. Easter tells you time and time again where you can find Jesus. It calls you to remember the fact that he died for your sins and he was put in the grave, but that on the third day he rose again. But the choice is completely yours. Easter, the story itself, cannot choose for you. And so will you believe and allow the message of salvation to save your soul? Or will you continue to go on in unbelief, thinking that today is just another day, that it's no more significant than any other. Believe the truth of the gospel. Allow Jesus to cover your sins. Allow him to give you eternal peace and eternal life with God. Allow him to raise you up to new life, just like he spoke to Jesus in the tomb and rose him up through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as we think about what all this means for us, Today, we, we hear this story many times. The, the story of Easter, uh, really every Sunday is Easter Sunday because we get to celebrate the resurrection. But at least every day, every year, we have the holiday called Easter. And how appropriate is it that this year it has come in a time of confusion? You know, why is the coronavirus so devastating? Why are so many people losing their lives? Why can't we find a cure or at least a medicine that will help uh, ease the symptoms? When will it all go away? When will our life return to normal? Will it ever return to normal? Is this our new normal? There's so many questions flying around and there's so much confusion. And really, I, as your pastor, I can't answer any of these questions. 
But I do know that Easter in itself is a story of miraculous hope. And it's not a fairy tale, but it's a true story of miraculous hope and salvation during the most confusing times. Think about the state that the women, these, these women were in as they're coming to the tomb early that Sunday morning. As they're bringing spices and they're trying to pay the respect that Jesus was that Jesus deserved and they get there they go in the tomb and he's not there if we look back up at the top in verse 2 it says they found the stone rolled away from the tomb they went in but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus and while they were perplexed they were they were perplexed they were in a time of confusion they knew what had happened they were there they watched him die they're coming to pay him respects, and now his body is gone. What is going on? They, but they left the tomb with an entirely different purpose and an entirely different attitude. But in the middle of it all, there's that time and that haze of confusion. And so right now, Easter, this time of year, everything that we're going through, life is perplexing. Life is confusing. But in the middle of the confusion, God is faithful to speak. He's faithful to give you the truth. And so do you know where to find Jesus? He's not in the tomb, but he is on the throne. He's the everlasting king. And in the midst of your confusion and pain, Jesus is still the living God. His life stands in the middle between death and life. And he is the only way to the Father. And in the middle of this confusing time, God is also calling you to remember the gospel. To remember that no amount of confusion, no amount of discomfort, no amount of pain can take away from what God has done for you. Jesus died for you to take away your sins. He covered them with his blood and he cast them as far as the east is from the west. And he has risen from the grave. Death could not hold him and death cannot hold any who are found in him. Heart disease, cancer, the coronavirus, there is nothing that can stop the power of God. There is no disease that can take away the truth of the gospel. Jesus died in your place so that you can live forever in his. He died the death that we all deserve so that we can inherit the future that none of us deserve in heaven. He died in your place so that you can live in his. And so what will you choose? Does the truth of the Bible seem like nonsense? Is it just another story that we tell each year before we go out and we hunt for, for eggs that are colored and filled with candy? Or will you believe that the gospel, the story of Easter, is the greatest news that has ever been told, that you have ever heard? Many news stations now, they've got the slogan of facts over fear regarding the coronavirus. But Luke and all the other gospel writers, their slogan would have been facts over fiction. Luke wanted us to listen to the story and to the events that he recorded so that we know the truth, that Jesus' body wasn't stolen, that it wasn't just missing. Look at what Peter does when he goes into the tomb in verse 12. It says, He stooped to look in, and he saw only the linen cloths. So he went away amazed at what had happened. Jesus' body wasn't stolen. It wasn't missing. The grave clothes were still there. Peter found them. In the middle of the darkest time in humanity, and in the middle of that tomb, God the Father spoke to God the Son, and through the power of God the Spirit, Jesus awoke from the dead. He stood up and he unwrapped his grave clothes, and he left them and the tomb behind. And he can do the same for each and every one of you. And he is willing to do the same for everyone on this planet. And so whatever is trapping you, whatever is holding you back from experiencing the love and the grace and the peace of God, 
would you just remove it? Let him cleanse you from it. There's nothing that you have ever done. There's nothing that you could ever do that can trap Jesus and hold him back from saving you. Scripture tells us that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. So will you confess him as your Lord today? You have to look in the right place. He's not in the tomb, but he is on the throne. Will you allow him to reign on the throne of your life today? Will you make him your Lord and your Savior? You have to remember and believe that he has risen. And since he has been raised, he will raise you. Only believe. And so as we close this morning, I want to give you an opportunity, wherever you may be listening from, just to be able to respond. Now, if you are willing to confess that Jesus is the Lord of your life, if you're willing to turn and, and repent and confess your sins to him and believe that he isn't in the tomb, but that he is on the throne because he was raised from the dead, salvation can and it will be yours. And so I'm going to ask us all to just bow your heads right where you are, no matter where you're watching from. And if you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if you have never let him take control of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to do that now. now I'm going to lead you in a prayer that you can, you can repeat, you can say a similar prayer, or you can pray a completely different prayer. Just the, the message of it is that Jesus asking him to save you, to give you new life. And so with your head bowed, I just ask that you reflect, and if you have never given Jesus control of your life, I encourage you to do that today. And so Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for sending Jesus. Father, we know that we are sinners. I know that I am a sinner. And I just ask that you would forgive me and that you would cleanse me from all of my sin. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were buried and put in the tomb. But I also believe, God, that you rose Jesus from the grave and that he is no longer there, but he is on the throne. Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Save me, Jesus, by your power. Thank you for loving me and for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so if you prayed that prayer, or if you prayed a prayer similar to that, as we close, we have a website. It's called SalemBaptist.Weebly. It's W-E-E-B-L-Y.com. That's SalemBaptist.Weebly.com. And up at the top, there's a, a little menu bar, and one of the tabs is called Receiving God's Salvation. If you've prayed to receive Jesus for the first time, we just want to celebrate that with you. And so if you would go to that tab and just enter in your name and your email, we would love just to have a record of that so that we can celebrate. And of course, you can always reach out to me through the Facebook page. You can directly message me there. You can reach me on uh, my cell phone at 615-606-8753. And again, we're not going to bombard you with a bunch of material or, or a list of things to do, but we just want to celebrate the fact that you have given your life to Jesus. And so I just ask that uh, if you have done that for the first time, that you would go to one of those different, different ways to get in contact with us just so that we can have a record and so that we can celebrate that with you. And then if you have been a Christian for many, many years, and you, I just want to encourage you to celebrate what the true meaning of Easter is. That it's no, I don't think it's any surprise that the Easter account, the story of the resurrection is in every single gospel. Because it's calling us to know the truth. And it's calling us to remember the truth of the gospel. And it's calling us to choose. And so even if you've been following Jesus your entire life, it's always good to think back, and even when we're facing times of confusion and times of discomfort and pain, just to remember that, Jesus, if you left the grave behind, you can overcome whatever we're facing today. 
And so if you've been a believer for many years, I just encourage you this afternoon, this week, just to just to pray and 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 praise God for his salvation. Because it is a free gift. He has done all the work for us. And so this morning I want us to close in prayer. And so pray with me. Father, we thank you again for for all of your blessings, but God, we see your blessings most clearly at the cross. And Father, then from the cross to the grave, and Jesus, now the grave is empty. And so Father, we see your power and your love and your salvation most clearly in the cross and in the empty grave. And Father, we praise you for that. And Lord, we just ask and, and we pray, may we never forget May we never get into the habit of reading, uh, reading the account of all that you went through on our behalf and it, and it just become a ritual. May it never become just something that we do. But God, may we always remember it as what it is, that, that you are life, that you are the reason that we exist and that you are the reason for our life. So Father, we thank you and we praise you. We ask, God, that your message would continue to spread over the face of this world. And even in the midst of confusion and even in the midst of pain and death, God, we know the truth that death cannot hold you. And death cannot hold any of those who are in you. And so, Father, we just ask that you would continue to do what only you can do, that you would seek and save the lost. And, Father, we praise you and we thank you for saving us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So again, we do. I just want to thank you for your continued flexibility for, uh, for Salem Baptist members. I just, uh, we just want you to know that we love you, me and Crystal and our family. And we are thankful to be here with you. And we just want to continue to encourage you and just thank you for your flexibility in these difficult and, and unusual times where we can't all come together. And then if you're, if you're watching and you're not a part of Salem Baptist Church, we just want to thank you for tuning in. As we know, there are, uh, there are thousands of different sermons and, and churches that you could have uh, watched this morning. And so I just want to thank you for, for joining us this morning. And if there is anything that, that we can do for you, uh, just reach out to us and let us know. Uh, we are going to be meeting tonight, as usual, at 6 o'clock. We're going to have an abbreviated Bible study continuing through the Gospel of Luke and the Beatitudes, and we're going to have just a very short recap of our business meeting. And so Miss Diane is going to be here just to briefly share uh, more or less some updates about the church. And uh, But we look forward to seeing you back online tonight. Thank you.